What up, what up, what up, what up, ladies and gentlemen? We are back and we're gonna have the best. Um, we're about to have Ms. the wife of the Diego Corrales, who's also the president of the Nevada Boxing Hall of Fame. Um, so we're in for a very special treat because there's going to be a ceremony this year. Yeah, so, you know, obviously because of the pandemic, they are playing catch-up now. So, you know, it's going to be a three-in-one. They're going to have the 2020, 2021, and obviously this year the 2022, uh, you know, inductee class. The the So it'll be a three-in-one. It'll be a lot. And she's here to join us, obviously, to talk about what they have in store, talk about the inductees and everything that they're doing. Um, so I'm excited to be joined by the one and only... Uh, uh oh, she brought gifts. Uh oh, damn, that's a whole bunch of stuff y'all about to get. Uh oh. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm wonderful. How are you guys? Good, We're happy good. to have you. Thank you so much. Look at Danny running straight for the shirts. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. So, Miss Corrales, how are you? <laughs> I'm wonderful. It's Corrales Lewis, by the way. Corrales, Corrales Lewis. Lewis. Oh, yeah. so you remarried? Yes. Okay. I am. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Um, is, is Michelle fine? Is that okay? Michelle is great. All right, Michelle yeah. is fine. Yeah. yeah. So Danny's used okay. to Michelle. I used to work for <laughs> for Michelle. Yes. Um, first year back since the pandemic. I know we've spoken off camera, but very exciting to have three classes in one. I'm sure that comes with a lot of work as well. You know, uh, talk to us. How excited are you for this year's? Uh, Nevada Boxing Hall of Fame. I'm extremely excited. We're partnering with Resorts World. It's a beautiful resort um, facility, hotel, the, the amenities that they have there. I'm I'm expecting to put on an epic event. I mean, we're going to have two full days full of fan-friendly champions, legend takeover, as I call it. And it's been it's going to be a pleasure to be able to do that right back on the Las Vegas Strip. And that's big for you guys to uh, get Resorts World. I was there when you guys did it at Caesars, and I've been to when you guys did it at Red Rock. But Resorts World, obviously being the newest uh, hotel and casino here in Las Vegas and on the Strip, very big. How um, how exciting and you know because it's a it's a lot of people you have to accommodate this year. How exciting is it to be doing it at the newest hotel here in Vegas? It, I mean, it's a pleasure. It's an honor, actually, that they would even entertain having us. Um, I think that our brand speaks for itself and what we've been able to do because we truly are like a mega award show for the boxing world. Um, when we go in, I take it extreme measures. Uh, my team and I, which is Anthony, and, and uh, he's he's my supporter and everything, but uh, um, we, we, do, we go above and beyond, right? Because these champions, these legends, they did so much for this sport for our entertainment, that what I want to do for them is just show them that we care. Say thank you in the utmost when we present them with their rings and their trophies, and we make them live in that moment that they had years ago. You know, and that means everything to me. Now, with this year, so it is 2020, 21, and 22, correct? Yes, uh-huh. So how are you going? How are you going about it? Um, because once again, you know, three classes versus typically one. How are you guys going about it? And you know, planning for this many yeah. people in such a large—I mean, your largest <laughs> event to so, date. Yeah, we're getting very creative, and we're already talking to the inductees, saying, "Okay, guys, it's a trilogy year. We want to definitely make sure your speeches are impactful, but." At a minimum, you know, and and that's we we are looking at ways to be more innovative, to keep the crowd engaged and keep everyone happy in the room and not make it a long drawn out night. You know, we have a stellar classes, you know, being that we have three classes and we're just going to put it all together properly. And the best thing I do is say, tell everyone to join us, you know, go you know. there, be a part of the event, be a part of the amateur show, be a part of the magic, because that's what we're going to bring out this year, guys. It's been three years. We're gonna come and we're gonna we're gonna knock everyone out. That's what we're gonna do. It's we're planning for a knockout. So why do you continue to do this if you've moved on, you've remarried? Mm -hmm. um, I guess it's a two parter. And is it stressful for your relationship? I mean, I, I'm a jealous man. I'll be like, man, you still <laughs> doing this and thinking about? I mean, I don't know. I just gotta ask these questions because I'm a jealous man. I respect it. 
But you know what? I think my husband is very um, open to the fact that he realized that part of me feels like, why not me? You know, I got involved in this, of course, when in 2013, when the inaugural year happened, it put me back in touch with what I feel is family. You know, there's a lot of uh, fighters and champions and former legends that I've been able to honor, but I look at those guys as family. And with my husband, he's very confident. You know, our relationship is very strong. Um, he doesn't feel threatened by this sport or what I do for this sport. And, you know, there's one thing to say, you you know, you're, you have a husband that's calling you saying, I'm coming to get the kids. But <laughs> there's something else when, you know, he's a legend in his right and he's gone on. He's mm -hmm. passed away, you know. So yeah. I don't think my husband ever feels there's like any type of competition or there's any insecurities he's extremely confident he works you know he's very successful in his own realm of the music industry and he has friends and things that he do you know that he's around beautiful women all the time mm. successful women all the time so you know i have to eliminate <coughs> that same confidence you know it's kind of like he's doing him i'm doing me but you know what we do magic together and that's what we do we support we have the kids we have a good fan. he's a huge boxing fan i think he's become more of a boxing fan than even I am at times because oh, wow. he he sometimes corrects me, you know. Oh, wow. <laughs> and our, our thing is, you know, when when he we we're each other's soundboard, you know. And it does it gets it really taxing. It takes a lot of time. But I have someone that's home that's a that's a backbone, you know. I know that he has my back too because he doesn't want to see me fail. That's the one thing I don't like to do is ever, you know, fail at anything that I mm, do. Right. So and he knows how important it is to me. So For thank you. <laughs> for those who have not had the opportunity to attend one of your galas, one of your uh, event-filled weekends of the Nevada Boxing Hall of Fame, what can they expect this year? Wow, they can expect us to be literally right in front of the iconic Mike Tyson bronze statue on the district ground of Resorts World, out in the open. We're going to have the amateurs out there just banging <coughs> it out and putting out their best. And then to be recognized by the champions. I was just looking at a clip from a previous video, and you see Bernard Hopkins, and you see Chiquita Gonzalez. You see these guys there watching these up-and-coming kids. That means everything to them. So you know? you're going to be having a live amateur boxing show? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. That's part of our event as well. You know, of course, we do our VIP parties and, you know, our dancing and our mixing and mingling. But you know what? We also bring it to the fans. And we have our experience, our boxing fan experience, to where we're going to have our meet and greet and we're going to have different, you know, boxing style vendors and other things out there. We, it's just going to be a, a weekend. I just tell everyone, be a part of it. Be a part of the magic. Come out. Even if you get a room and you just hang out, if you figure it's not your thing to be at a black tie event, just come be a part of that magic, you know? Uh, just explain to everyone why you're doing this. Like, why you? Why are you the president? Why do you keep doing it? Uh, how'd you get into being a part of the Nevada Boxing Hall of Fame, or at least running it, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, well, going back to when Rich Murata started, he's the founder of Nevada Boxing Hall of Fame, and he inducted Diego um, as part of his inaugural class. And again, going back, being around that energy made me realize that, that I enjoyed, you know, the boxing family that I had kind of gotten away from in a little distant, and he needed help. You know, these Hall of Fames, it takes a lot of work and hours and it, it falls on very little reward at times other than when you're doing the event and, and having people come out and enjoy it, for, you know. So, and Rich wasn't local. He was actually from California, media guy. Um, and so it just kind of evolved, you know, and, and I'm a person, I like to take the lead and I run it. Um, and it's important to me too for Diego's legacy to remain prominent. You know, I don't want him to be forgotten. He did, He gave his self, he gave his heart, he gave his soul to the world, to the boxing world. And I don't want that to be forgotten either because I have children. You know, I have Diego Corrales Jr. that that means something for mm. him to carry that name, you know. And, and for that, I appreciate being a part of keeping these legacies alive and not just of Diego's. There's so many other guys. Like I told you, it's like, it's a boxing family. When you look at the Winky Wrights and the Sugar Shane Moseys and the Bones Adams, and you look at all these guys that were just, you know, Diego's peers and a part of our life every day, to sit here now and be a part of keeping their legacy alive, that means a lot to me, you know? That's beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, so... You have a son with I the do. same exact name. Has he, I don't know, does he like boxing? <laughs> is he taking it up? How old is he? 
Yeah, he's 14. Okay. He'll be 15. Actually, I was um, expecting when Diego passed away. So, um, little Diego is now starting to get into boxing. Mm. Um, it was a unique story, but he actually got involved in it. And now he loves it. He looks at me and says he's going to be a world champion. And he actually has the full name. So he's actually Diego Chico Corrales Jr. So I can't ever say he'll be there. But if he wants it and believes in himself, hard work, dedication, he'll get there. That's all I can tell. So him, is so. he is he currently training? He does. He goes over to DLX Boxing oh, and he wow. trains. He trains with uh, Hassan Rahman. He okay. trains with uh, Lonnie the Great. He Kenny Adams have gotten a hold of him. You know, so it's like. The guys are showing love because they were a part of, of his dad. You no know? amateur so, fights yeah. as of No, yet. no, no. We haven't gotten to that. He's only been in the in the gym and around the magic, as I call it, for a very short time. So, But keep an eye out for him. Who knows, right? Who knows what tomorrow will bring? Um, I look at the little young kids of the sport. I'm just speaking about Diego on to next. I look at little cash flow Diaz. He was mm -hmm. in elementary school with my kids. I'm probably speaking my age, but he was in elementary school. I look at like Carmel Mella. I look at him. He came on your show. Yes. It's like I looked at these guys when they were participating in our amateur shows mm -hmm. or honor them as when they were the best amateur of the year or the best prospect of the year. And now I look at them in these world championship bouts. It's mm -hmm. like I'm honored to just be like, wow, you know, that meant something. And this is I'm a part of something that's far greater than just the hall of fame experiences you know i feel like that's that's magical to me now because it is three induction classes obviously a lot more fighters to deal with than typical and I, i'm curious out of all the fighters in these three classes are there any that we know for sure will not be able to make it to the... Not as of yet. Okay. Not as of yet. Okay. We're, we're working now, reaching out, getting our confirmations. Um, we'll start to announce more confirmations. Um, I'm very fortunate to say that over the years, since the start of Nevada Boxing Hall of Fame, we've only had two legends that did not come for their induction, and it was for a great cause, you know, medical reasons. But, and there was only two. So we've had a very good success rate. And I hope that this three-year trilogy does the same. It gives it the same percentage, you know. Speaking of that percentage, uh, I believe the last conversation we had, you said that you were pretty confident that Floyd Mayweather Jr. would be back? That he would be back as far as well, being part of the ceremony? I well, hope so. Yeah, yeah. I, I certainly hope so. You know, Floyd's been, um, he's blessed me with his presence on just about every one of our events. <laughs> um, so I hope that he would be there. I'd never like to speak out of turn. And once I get that confirmation, we'll definitely let the fans know. Um, I can just say that I'm sure if he's watching, all right, Floyd, I need you, baby. <laughs> <laughs> no, hopefully Floyd is definitely there to receive uh, his induction. 2021 very unique. Only two inductees. Um, two great ones, though, being Floyd and Roy Jones Jr. What was it about those two that deserved for them to be kind of alone in their own in their own class? Oh, I can answer that easily. Both of those guys were top choices for 2020. When I reached out to those guys' camps, both of them were already speaking of possibly going back in the ring. Because one of our requirements is that you're retired for so many years, right? And so each of them said, it's an honor, it's great, but just so you know, their camps were saying, you know, Roy's talking about fighting. Floyd's probably going to come back and fight because you have to think we're starting to prepare a little early. Right. So when that happened, it's like, okay, we put both of them on ice because they were both potentially going to come back. So then the pandemic hit. We announce, we move on, no one fights. Now it's exhibitions, it's this. So with a year of so much going on in the world, those two legends to me deserve that class, that year. Because again, they would have been in in 2020. So why not give them that precedent, that stage, that basically that honor to just carry the whole class. And trust me, I do believe that those two can carry a whole class. More than right? capable. They're more, more than, than capable more of than carrying capable. the class. Absolutely. Absolutely. So that's why it's special to have those two legends carry that 2021. So, Michelle, I have some questions from the people. First one is from New Orleans. Rule 504 says, tell us what events the Nevada Boxing Hall of Fame have planned uh, and obviously he says, can TBV get an invite? I think we were invited. <laughs> I think so. But if you weren't invited, you can head over to NVB, 
HOFs for Nevada Boxing Hall of Fame dot com and purchase tickets there. So they are available already. Yes. Oh, yeah. Tickets Beautiful. are tickets are available, different par- price points uh with different perks. So head over, uh check Give it out. Give me one of the perks. Give me one package. What do we got? So if you get the silver package, All right? right? Silver medalist, Shakur Stevenson. So not just do you get <laughs> your your premium dinner seating at the gala, mm-hmm. not just do you get entry to the cocktail reception. Not just do you get access to the silent auction, but you get a commemorative program that includes a WBC amateur green belt uh, challenge entry. So you get that as well. And then, you know, there's uh, more as well. The gold. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. So that's kind of to entice fathers to sign up so that their kid gets a, a slot on the amateur tournament? No, 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 no. No, just entry into... To, to be able to enter the tournament and watch it is, you know. As oh, a as a viewer. Yeah, yeah as, as a fan. Not a participant. As a, right, as a fan. So I do have a lot of father trainers and children. Like, we just had a 9-year-old the day before yesterday, a 15-year-old yesterday. Um, for the amateur tournament that you're holding here in Las Vegas as part of the event, how can people participate and or reach out? Who do they reach out to to get on that card? We'll definitely promote that and, and put that information out there. We go through USA Boxing. We okay. partner with the local gyms. And because it's important to us to make sure if we're only putting on 10 to 12 fights, we want to make sure that, A, those guys are going to show up. They're going to make the way. It's going to be a good bout for the fans because, as you mentioned, everyone that's attending the gala is invited to attend and watch those shows so Mm -hmm. we want them to enjoy what they're seeing as well um so when we say oh yeah you know come out be a part of it do this amateur show do something you still have to be worthy to fight in front of those legends because you know we don't necessarily want someone that is just now turning get getting into them we don't want diego there yet his very first fight to be in front of those type of legends it's someone that definitely has has to have shown themselves and proven a little bit in the sport and they can be partnered and paired with an opponent that's of equal talent as well that we can now put on a good showcase of boxing. So, and when you said more information will be provided via Instagram as far as uh, putting information out there for those? Correct. Once okay. we start to actually look for those bouts, we have an entire team and matchmakers that set those fights oh, wow. up. So, Beautiful. yeah, it's actually done just like an amateur show, um, USA Boxing amateur show that gets behind the the event and backs us on that so of course i definitely don't sit there and make the matches so no one can call me or say hey i want my son to fight no it's done through the boxing world and just want everybody to know that you guys can head over on instagram follow them nvb hof official so nevada boxing hall of fame official and there is a link um for the tickets to the gala in the bio in the bio so definitely and obviously that'd be the place for information as well so you want to make sh- uh make sure to head over follow and uh be up to date with all the information i have james valdez in san antonio says no question just wanted to say i was a huge fan of your ex-husband he had some great memorable fights the one against casa mayor were some of my favorite thanks for coming on the show thank you appreciate that that's i love casa by the way <laughs> Uh, actually, he should be coming in. We have a, one of his fighters scheduled, tomorrow. and he's coming in with him. Yeah. And we just seen him... With Roly. With Roly. Yeah. He's Roly. Oh, really? He's, he's yeah. helping Roly. Yeah. Cubans unite. Cubans I unite. hear he's a very good trainer. He mm-hmm. definitely... And, and a lot of it has to do with his style. The, the fact that he's able to get in there and, and do his salsa and dance. Mm-hmm. Yeah. When, when Casa and Diego were fighting, trust me, I had some issues with Casa. We used to go head to head. But, <laughs> but now that years later, you know, it's like it's nothing but admiration and love. You know, we see one another. It's it's the hugs. It's the smile. He comes to all of the Nevada Boxing Hall of Fame events. You know, and that's what you asked me a question earlier. Like, what can people expect? You know, the gold ticket It's going to include that meet and greet and the fan experience and everything else. These guys meet and up. greet with someone specific or all the inductees. All the inductees. Oh wow! We're, we schedule a meet and greet for you to come out. We have the inductees there for you to talk to, meet them. Now is it? Part. Like me and the inductees, or it's an open room with all the inductees and all room. of the um, gold ticket. Correct. Okay. It's an open room. We usually have that as a breakout separate event because there's again there's there's fans that may not be able to attend the formal black tie dinner, and we understand that. But for that fan, we want you to be able to come there and still meet some of your legends that Absolutely. are here for this this event. So that's something that actually when we leave here, we're gonna go and get some more details about and because we like to evolve, we like to turn this weekend snowballs. So. 
what our announcement when we had our fan experience, you know, the announcement of the classes, we had game night with the champs. So those types of things happen all the time, you know. So we get guys sitting there doing karaoke and doing push ups mm. against each other. And, Don't say karaoke, and, and I'm in there. Playing, you know, yeah. We even had guys playing spades. Oh, wow. And Uh-oh. dominoes. It's like a party. It's <laughs> cool about to show up. Right, <laughs> it's, right, a right, right, it's a party. It's a party. It's a party. And that's what we like to be a part of, you know. And when you leave a Hall of Fame, you can go buy the most expensive ticket to sit ringside at a fight and you're going to leave there enjoying the fight but when you leave a hall of fame event you leave with memories that you mm-hmm. couldn't get from just attending a fight and it's true you, you'll never have that many legends and or names in the sport not, in one facility under one roof at the same time not, same place not just that but from my experience I, I forget what year it was but um you guys were over at teasers and that was the first one i you know i attended and for me it was 2018 and for me it was special because it was like, I'm younger. So a lot of these mm-hmm. legends, I never got to watch fight live. Right. But to be able to, you know, interact and share that experience and be able to share the moment, because that's a very special moment in their career. Like, you know, that's literally after the Hall of Fame. That's it, you know, right. it, you know, as far as uh, career accomplishments. So I just want to give you your due credit because you guys do a Thank phenomenal you. job and, uh, it makes it very enjoyable for the fans as well, you know, so definitely want to give you your due credit. We appreciate credit. that. We, I mean, that in itself is, makes us feel good. That's why we do what we do. Just to know that you even said that means the world to us. Trust me. No. I so I, I want a few questions. Uh, you know, this one's probably not boxing, but I did want to know your nationality. <laughs> I'm mulatto. Mulatto. Yeah. Which is? Black and white. Oh, yeah. oh. Yeah. I don't know. I look at your eyes and it could be the eyelashes, but I thought... <laughs> they, you were Latina. I just no. yeah, and people then tend to think that. obviously Marion Corrales, yeah. right? It, you yeah. know, it's funny because I, I just assume the same thing. I'm yeah. like, oh, she's uh, for sure Latina. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, your eyes, your hair. I'm like, okay, that's okay. No, I'm right out of St. Louis, Missouri. St. Show Louis. me state. <laughs> How'd you guys meet? If that is not too personal, I would like you to and, know how you and Corrales met. You and Diego. Oh wow, um, I was actually it was New Year's Eve mm-hmm. and. Um, Friends of mine were saying, hey, let's go hang out. And I'm like, oh, I'm tired. I don't want to go. So we actually went to a close nearby place, you know, a little in, local spot in Vegas, in oh. Vegas, um, to celebrate New Year's Eve. And, of course, Diego was there in his old camp. And, you know, it just so you were out. living already in Vegas? Or oh, you I was. Came? I was living in Vegas. I've been in Vegas for over 30 years. Oh, wow. So, yeah, I love Vegas. You okay. know, so I was here. So, wait. So you went out to a spot and you just randomly bumped into... Didn't even know who he was. Didn't know, you know, did wasn't really an avid boxer, boxing fan. I mean, of course, I knew the legends, you know, Roy and Mike and all of them from attending different events or fights or whatever. But I wasn't, I didn't know who he was. Actually, <laughs> I thought he, when he invited me to go up to Mount Charleston, he was training there. And I thought, oh, because he never asked me what I did. And I didn't ask him what he did. It didn't matter. You know, I was on that whole, I'm in my own space, you mm-hmm. know, have my life, my career, whatever. And, uh. I said, oh, he must be a farmer or something because he's all the way out here in this ra- Mount Charles. He was up there at Greg Hanley's ranch. And um, he's like, oh, I have these lions and monkeys. And I thought, oh, he must do something with farming or something like that. Some... And so I didn't know he was training for like one of the biggest fights of his career. He was training to fight Floyd Mayweather. Mm. And um, that's how I met him. And then it was just like, oh, man, I don't want to be around this guy in, in this world. <laughs> so. Oh, my God. So that is so much more interesting now. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So you guys are dating during the camp for the Mayweather fight. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So how did he deal with that loss? You being so new in his life. Like, again, I'm a man's man. I'm like, fuck, I lost in front of the girl that I'm attracted to. I invited. I'm sure he invited you to the fight. Yes. Oh, yes. my God. Yes. How did he deal with it? More or less, how did I deal with it? I saw a whole nother world that I was just like, man, this is crazy. Um he didn't take it very well. I mean, he was 33 and 0, mm-hmm. and he gets up there, and he had a lot going on. That's what was behind the scenes. There was so much going on behind the scenes. Um, you don't take anything away from anyone, you know, because the night was the night. But, I mean, he was just going through it. I mean, um, so when he lost, yeah, he didn't take it very well. He took it, you know, like probably any champion when they lose, take that first. I mean, he had never been knocked down. And gosh, I mean, Floyd could just pretty much blow in his direction and he failed, you know, Mm -hmm. so it wasn't his best performance. And I think there was there was a lot of embarrassment there. But I guess I'm just a different type of person because realistically, it wasn't even about that. You know, it wasn't about 
you know, the guy I went bowling with and hung out with and shot pool with, that was more the guy. This guy in this ring, he may be more of a headache to me than, mm. uh, than the person that I know behind the scenes because, of course, that comes with what celebrity status come mm-hmm. with, right? So I was just beyond that. But, you know, someone asked me, like, is there anyone that give you awe, give you goosebumps? No, because I've been around so many very successful people. I admire people and I respect them. But he went in there to do a job. And you know what? Like some of us, sometimes we bring out our A game and sometimes we don't. We didn't have the best performance. And you know what you do? You show character when you come back. And that's what I think all of this is all about, right? You know, well, I think it shows your character because, you know, um, not that I know any, but I can... I can assume a lot of women probably women would have left after the loss. I, I I've been around this sport for so long that I know how men speak before the fight. Right. I'm gonna beat him. This, <laughs> that, and the third. So it's like now to lose in front of someone you've just met, and when you meet someone, though, it's it's very tender. All that the beginning stages. You're right. opening up, and you know. So it's interesting to hear that. I'm, Thank you. I'm Thank curious you. because you said New Year's Eve. Yes, mm-hmm. that fight was. Only three weeks later, mm-hmm. what were those three <laughs> weeks like? No, uh, because what was he doing in the club? No, no, I'm joking, no, no, I'm joking, no, no, I'm no. I'm Because think about it. Like, imagine meeting somebody. Fucking the almanac. This we call him the almanac. Look at yeah. what he did here. Yeah, yeah. Be, because imagine, I could only imagine meeting somebody, and in three weeks they're having the, a fucking the biggest fight of the year versus w- Floyd. versus versus Floyd Mayweather, who at the time obviously he's not who he, who he is today. To you know, as far as uh, star power and all that stuff, but those three weeks, what were they like for you? And uh, because I'm sure there was life was moving a million miles an hour, I could only assume. Yeah, it, it really was. But I want to say it was probably moving that way for him, because again, I believe in giving everyone their space. Um, I didn't, I wasn't that type of needy woman, you know. Again, I had my job and things that I did that kept me busy. I didn't even realize the magnitude of the fight mm. until I really came around and went to the press conferences and saw what was really going on. Um, I laugh about it because, you know, I look at Jay Prince and I look at all them because they were all with Floyd. And now it's like when they all became our team, one of the jokes was like, you know, man, I really thought you guys were some some uh, buttholes back in the day. <laughs> going against, you know, Diego. And it's just, it's kind of crazy, the mind games that happen and, and the way you have to get in, you know, fighter's head and opponent's head. So, you know, just from the the background and everything i had i was like man you guys were you guys are going at him kind of hard you know because diego's a nice guy he wasn't the thug guy or the street guy he's just a nice guy and you know when you talk about talking smack he's confident but he was never like the the what you see today you know i'm gonna beat him i'm gonna do this he was confident in, in his ability but he wasn't that big talker he believed let me go in the ring and show you what i can do you know and he knew it was a tough bout you know for him but um so I think the embarrassment was there, but it was really the failure or or the fact that he felt he let himself down and his fans down because that meant a lot to him for mm. the fans. But as far as the the him being or me leaving him, eh, that wasn't really an option because I wasn't there because of the fighter. You know, I didn't meet the fighter. I didn't know he was a fighter in New Year's Eve. You know, until it kind of I found all that out later. You know, as we were. Yeah, but, that, uh, but that's what I'm saying. Those three weeks leading up to that Floyd fight, that must have, or at least fight week, right? You said once you started attending the press conference, the way, and then obviously the fight itself. When you're at the fight, did you like then know like, okay, this this is actually pretty big? Well, I'll tell you one thing I realized is, dang, I, I know now why his trainer would get so mad if I had chips and salsa or a cheesecake. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> so you having chips and salsa in the gym? <laughs> no. <laughs> When he would have his little snacks or whatever, oh. you know, it was just kind of like, I didn't realize, you know, me, I'm like, this is a grown man. If you want to eat, let him eat. Mm-hmm. You know, now, all these years later, of course, you know, you, you, you're you just as part of the camp. It was times when it was like, oh, you have to make 130. I'm going to make it with you. Let's go. Oh, Let's wow. go. I'll train with you. But I, that had to come after the fact. First fight in, man, it's like, well... I'm from St. Louis. I'm a Southern type hospitality girl. So I'm going to make a cheesecake. I'm going to make lasagna. I'm going to pull out the whole spread because that's what I do. Right. right. And I didn't know, you know, like how significant that was as far as like being encouraging. I feel like you're a grown man. You want to eat, eat, you know, you know, your job, you got to go in there and lose that weight, you know? So, but all these years later, you know, of course, I mean, very short time after that, I realized, like, dang, you know, I, I get it now. You know, this is serious. And it does take a, a tribe. It takes a village, you know, to, to really prepare the guys for, for that, you know. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. 
Well, let me see here. I got Young Tigre in San Antonio. It says, what's your thoughts on Serrano versus Katie Taylor fight? The women's boxing uh, big event that just happened a few weeks ago. I think that was huge for the sport. You know, I was back in the days, and I don't know how much you guys are familiar with Butch and Marianne, you know, the Gottliebs. You know, they used to do a lot in women's boxing, and they always tried to get women's boxing to be recognized and to be on that level. Um, all I can say is it's it's wonderful to see it happening now. It's sad to know it didn't happen before because there's been lots of ladies. You know, you have your Ava Knights here local. You have your Layla McCarters. You have your, um, gosh, I, I can't think of all the names, but I a mean, lot of the women that support. One of, one, of your, one of the Nevada Boxing Hall of Fame, Layla Ali, right? Mm -hmm. I could only imagine how much bigger... Uh, oh she would have goodness. been today, you know, and obviously she's huge because of the name and obviously what she did for her own career. But I've always thought Ann Wolf, same thing. How big would Ann Wolf Absolutely. have been in today's day and age in boxing? So, mm -hmm. um, yeah. you know, big things going on. But, you know, I feel like women like that need to, you know, we give them their credit. But even women like you, right, making this this happen for the Nevada Boxing Hall of Fame. And obviously all those years... Uh, by the side of Diego, you know, I just want to uh, say thank you for coming by and, you know, joining us and telling us, for those who didn't know, uh, how great indeed the Nevada Boxing Hall of Fame is. I know you guys are going to put on a spectacular show later this year uh, in August, the weekend of August 27th, correct? Um, 20, 26 and 27. 26 but and 27. I, I would like to ask if there are any sponsorship opportunities for, um, or are you guys accepting uh, any partnerships? Do you know? Is it difficult to put this together? Do Absolutely. you need outside assistance? Because this is the platform to you know speak up and see who can uh, step up. We definitely need everyone to step up. There's one thing about I can honestly say: getting the support, the support, the sponsorship, the type of um, partnerships that's really needed to put on this event is a battle. It's a battle every year. Um, the, we know the costs have gone up since the pandemic, um, and so we welcome that support. Reach out to us on our website, nvbhof.com. We do have a sponsorship deck. We do need some serious help. We need the fans to be there and participate, but actually any type of support and, and partnerships that we can get from the people within the boxing world that want to help us make magic. And I always think, right, there's guys out here and companies and entities that we're honoring the people that help you build your platform. So I would think that you would want to see us succeed in doing that, right? Because what we're doing is something important to these up and coming guys that you're looking to now be a part of your platform. A lot of these guys were admiring these legends that we're honoring. So I would think that it's important to take this outside of just even induction weekend with the right support and, and partnership and sponsorships. You know, I want to get our museum back up and going. I want to have the fight capital of the world, have a boxing mm -hmm. hall of fame for people to come out and enjoy themselves and be a part of, because Absolutely. that's what we do. And then what about you just here for the weekend and you can say, Oh man, I went over to the gym and I saw, you know, Casamayor or I saw, you know, Marquez or Fernando Vargas. I mean, imagine the honor in that for a boxing fan. So no, we're absolutely. just here for much more than just the gala and the induction weekend. Absolutely. Austin, quick screen share. Um, so I just want to show all the people the website where they can go to not just get tickets, um, but also donate and also um, be able to. I haven't have seen a potential. that's rich, right? That's I haven't seen around. him in forever. Yeah. Has he like totally stepped away from boxing? Well, he has not stepped away from boxing. He's looking for different opportunities. He lives in Reno. Um he's he had some medical conditions at one point that he's going through. So the run the day to day at the Hall of Fame is far too stressful for Rich. <laughs> That's obvious because it is a stressful uh, position to hold. So he enjoys being the fact that he started it and now he stepped aside to let Anthony and I come along and run it and actually hopefully grow this into something far, far bigger than what we can ever imagine. And my, my ideas never stop. It's just basically bringing them to light and fruition. Um, so I wanted to ask, and you don't have to answer, have you not been received with open arms by promoters and sanctioning bodies to keep Nevada Boxing Hall of Fame alive and moving? Received as in... Financially. Finan no, 
Now, with WBC has always been there. Uh, I am which a WBC I they ambassador. Would. Um, I do. I handle a lot of the WBC ground activities here in Las Vegas. So yes, of course. Um, as far as the promoters and everyone, no, no, it hasn't been. Um, but I don't look at that as negative. I looked at it as it, it hasn't been yet. You know, I never want to say that what they won't do or what they haven't been a part of. But yeah, you know, it's it's. I would love to see that. Reach out to the IBO, that. my good friend Ed Levine over there. Not to be confused with Jimmy Iovine of Interscope. <laughs> Um, some of the people from the IBO are listening now and okay. uh, heard the part of the lasagna and cheesecake, <laughs> but you should definitely reach out to them. They've always been very gracious and uh, generous with us and helped our movement. And yours is a greater one. So Aw, thank you. Definitely. I appreciate that. And I definitely will reach out for yeah, sure. Yeah, I appreciate yeah. that. Uh, I think those are all the questions from the people. Let me refresh just in case. Uh, Danny, if you don't have anything else. Yeah, I just I just wanted uh, once again for you to be able to give out the, the website few, and few the website and the social media as well, you know, for the people to just keep up and know where to go to find that information. So Yeah. So our website is nvbhof.com for Nevada Boxing Hall of Fame.com. And then, of course, if you follow us on Instagram for our announcements and our posts, we're at nvbhof official. So we'd love for that support as well. And then, guys, we brought some T-shirts here that we want you guys, if you guys want to use those as giveaways. Absolutely. For, you know, you guys decide what you want. We brought some gym bags and, and some of our Legend Line tees. Of course, I'm wearing Sugar Ray Leonard because That's it was hot. his birthday yesterday. Mm. So, you know, he's one of our inductees. He's come, you know, multiple events. He's always there. Um so we just wanted to, you know, show you guys that we appreciate you having us on. And maybe your listeners, your fans, if you can actually, actually what I want is for any of the inductees that you can get a hold of that are local and not too local, we can, you know, communicate on bringing them in. Yeah. But we would like to get them in, even if they're in L.A., Phoenix or uh, Las Vegas, just to have them in an interview and, and obviously let the world know that they'll be in the uh, ceremony and stuff as well. That would be I I'd think love a good to. idea. Let's Absolutely. do it. I do it. I think the guys are excited. They want to be a part of that, you know, and we'll definitely collaborate on them coming in to help us and and help promote their induction. I'm sure they want the fans to come. And you mentioned, you know, the close by places, but let's let's just think. We also have, you know, the hawk coming in. And yeah, we, we had have, Hawk we in had here. The hawk yeah. in here. And he I, was man, you know what? It's funny. I didn't think that interview, like, people still remember him so much. I still get DMs from that interview. Like, wow. man, you guys had the Hulk on there. I'm, I'm going to be honest. And that had, was weeks ago we've already. Had, um, we've had Shakur Stevenson, Sean Porter, Caleb Plant, but I honestly think the Hawks interview is probably the most, the the one with the most feedback on. Really? Yeah, yeah, from people. Awesome. So many people, and, you know, the Hawk and uh, the chef, his son, Julius, they were great and, yeah. you know, communicating and, it seemed like they didn't even want to leave. They were here like <laughs> no, oh, almost he was two gonna hours. come with us to San Diego. We did this function in San Diego, and 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 I invited him, but then he waited to get back to freaking uh, the Virgin Islands to say yes, and it's like oh. or the Bahamas. <laughs> I'm like, well, you that's that a little more. that experience you guys had with him? That's the experience that they deliver to fans who attend the Hall of Fame event. Absolutely. They're up close and personal. Marvin Hagler was sitting there in Caesars Palace on the casino floor, just actually in a common lounge area, just having a ball mm. with the fans that were there. And that's things you don't expect. Or that's see. how they are. Or see. That's how they are, though. I mean, they love that. You know, when you have a Sean Porter, for instance, who loves karaoke, he would love to sit here and sing with fans. So, you know, those are the things that we bring. And a lot of these modern day guys attend the event as well just to support the hall which i love that you know so that they can now help me honor the legends as well that they looked up to so. absolutely yeah and if anything it kind of gives them a a, a a picture a vision like i one day could be up there being inducted as well so yeah so great thing with you guys i got, got two going. more okay. we got nate the alien who says good morning what was it like for you when corrales came back and beat castillo in what is known as one of the greatest comebacks of all time. It was expected. Let me just say that. Mm. He went in there fearless. He had so much confidence, and he just felt like, come his exact words, and I quote, come hell or high water, I will leave that ring a winner. And part of it was because his uh, father, Ray Woods, had told him, you know, don't mess with that boy. He's too big for you. You know, and I think that that even motivated him to say, I'm going to prove him wrong. You know, Diego's one of those big guys. Don't tell me what I can't do because mm -hmm. I'm going to show you that I can. Um, and so I think it motivated him. So even when uh, one of the times when he was down, um, 
Showtime has clips of it. He looked over at me and I'm thinking, you good? You know, like, talk to me, communicate. And he popped up. He gave me a sign like, I got this. And so I was sitting there next to um, the Mosleys, actually, and, and I said, he got this. And he came back and he was the victor of it. I mean, it was a blessing, let me tell you, because it was some, I think my hands were sweating and I was clenching. I think I about broke fingers on some of the people sitting next to me. But um, he told me, you know, he, he, he made it clear that uh, he was going to leave there a victor. Well, that is uh, an amazing story. We have another one coming in from Alejandro Corona who says, what was it like for you, the Times... He fought Castillo. So two of the same questions, <laughs> different people. <laughs> I guess this one is not the rematch, but just both times in general. Um, well, the, of course, going into that fight, I think no one knew how epic that fight was going to be. It was a tremendous battle that I think was definitely underrated when they went into Mandalay Bay that night. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people probably hate that they weren't there, you know. Um, but going into the rematch, it was huge. You know, it was a huge welcoming at Caesars. It was actually over there at the um, the Thomas and Mack Center. I mean, it was huge. It was really like round 11. But what people don't understand is it probably happened too soon. It wasn't enough of a break. I mean, I think there was times when he probably still had certain bruises or marks mm. or what have you because it just – they ran it back to back. Um, and then when the weight issue happened, a lot of things that transpired, it, it just kind of, I think – let you really respect the fact that it does take time in between those battles. When a, when a champion, they leave themselves in a ring. Castillo and Diego will always be united because of that fight, right? But they left so much of themselves in a ring. And then what's even, when you think about that and say that, imagine dying two years to the day of that fight. Mm. So when you think and put that in perspective, you know that this sport, you know, does take a lot out of you. And so the rematch was the rematch. And of course he didn't come out the victor there. Um, and, and after the weight issue happened, I think that Diego felt, you know, Hey, I'm going to go in here and, and, and have pick it up from where it left off. When really, if you listen to Joe Goosen, he was kind of like, nah, let's make a few adjustments because you may have taken a little too many shots. But uh, Diego just was hard-headed. He just wanted to go in there and continue battling out in the phone booth, and we see what happened. Wow. Um, so I think now that is officially all the questions. Perfect. Yep, yep, yep. So uh, if you want to give out any social media, anywhere you want to direct our audience, now is the time. I would definitely say I appreciate the sport. If you guys want to just go and follow NVBHOF official to at least be a part of what we're announcing, be a part of the inductees, be a part of their journey, you know, follow the champions, follow the inductees. I appreciate all of them so much that do come out. You know, there's, of course, there's the legends, but there's there's also, they're the big iconic names, but there's also our other guys too that deserve it to be admired in the support as well. And they would really like that too. Absolutely. You know, we have guys that still making moves in boxing, you know, like Bones Adams. I'm looking at his shirt right here. He has a wonderful gym. He's going he in. Sure he's does. being inducted. Um, you know, he's making moves now as a trainer, and that's huge, you know. Um, so for those people, Christy Martin, another inductee. Absolutely. She's promoting now. I always want everyone to start to give these legends We actually flowers. called her show in um, Myrtle Beach. We were yeah. the commentators, so wonderful. shout out to Christy Martin. Absolutely. Uh, my producer sent me some audio. I'll tell you the truth. I mean, this has got to hurt Bob a lot, you know. This is... This is the fighter. He said, well, wasn't worth that. It wasn't worth the money to keep him. So they let me go. And, and then the fighter, the same fighter you say wasn't worth that money is coming back to haunt you. That's got to hurt. You remember that audio? No? You don't know where it's from? That's Diego uh, Corrales on Bob Arum. Uh, and I guess Bob had uh, released them mm -hmm. and then gave him an opportunity in a B-side fight. And Diego got the upset. So he yeah. was just expressing his thoughts. But that is it. Thank you so much. We're going to go ahead and take this picture uh, with Miss Lewis, and we'll be right back. Perfect. Thank you, guys. Thank Yo, if you enjoyed the video, feel free to hit the like, subscribe, and share. As always, if you want to support us to the next level, head over to the patreon.com. the boxing voice. We have tons of exclusive from Border Wars, Entitled, Betting Shows. The list goes on and on and on. But in addition to that, if you guys have questions for fighters, trainers, and promoters, this is where you can submit them. We will run out, get these questions answered, and put it back on the show just for you guys. Appreciate it. Peace.